What we're dealing with here is the outlook on cryptocurrency is changing rapidly just like everything else in cryptocurrency. The mining field, mining portion of cryptocurrency changes more than cryptocurrency. So with that, you know, obviously a year ago it was very easy to see GPU miners were doing very well. And when I got into this, I was like, let's build as many GPU miners as we can, as fast as we can. GPU mining is still certainly profitable today, but ASIC and FPGAs are changing the mining landscape. And ASIC is an application specific integrated circuit. And FPGA is a field programmable gate array, which means basically an FPGA, which look like, some of them look like this, kind of like a GPU rig, pretty cool stuff these are I mean these were four grand they're probably going for five six grand right now and because the the hype the mania is on for them they're very difficult to use but they're general purpose hardware they can be tuned and modified and so forth so they're like a GPU on steroids but the difference between a GPU and these are that you wouldn't be able to operate it without really professional training. Like if, if you don't know how to code, you don't know how to FPGA. Then we've got ASIC miners, which basically turns just turns out to just be Bitmain ant miners. So we've got all these miners purpose built. This is all they do. They can't do anything else. Then, you know, obviously we've got GPUs, which do everything from, you know, basic computing tasks, rendering, obviously mining, gaming, and so forth. You could even, you know, browse the web. Obviously, you don't really need a GPU for that, but you get my point there. I cover all of this in this article and a little, not not super in depth, but I try to touch on everything without making it longer and boring. So right now, I'm going to open up the GPU side and we're going to go forth like that. So personally, I'm mining a lot of Loki right now. I just had a video on it if you want to check out that. And again, I'm not here to show Loki or anything. I just want to show you in the last 72 hours and thanks out to geyser for donating some of his hash power which uh i appreciate it, man guys are mining you the man bro so i appreciate when anybody donates to me obviously and i skewed my earnings a little bit but it's probably about 130 in the last uh 72 hours and if you value loki at a dollar i'm beating all the projections on what to mine of what i'm supposed to be making so obviously gpu mining is certainly profitable especially when you go off these mainstream coins that are all listed on here but either way, even if you value it as current valuation, which is what you really should, and it's still going to be about on par. So I'll take my bets there. So long story short, GPU mining is profitable in the short term. I'll get to the medium term and definitely the long term, which again, I'll get to that more in a second. There's a new rumor here that they're going to show off the 1180, 2080, whatever it ends up being called at Hot Chips 30, which is going to be August 20th or so, I believe is the date. And I've got a rumor, I've got a, a, a source of mine, you know, if I want to sound like one of those cool guys where I've got like a bunch of sources, they, uh, he told me, and I believe this, we're, gonna not, we're not going to see these till quarter three, quarter four. Realistically, we're looking at quarter four to see the next generation of GPU, which is interesting. And if you also follow NVIDIA, especially in stocks, they predicted, they predicted like super low earnings or... Uh, the super low projection for the next uh, couple quarters and it's pretty simple they're tied huge to cryptocurrency whether they want to be or not they are and with the z9 coming out they're they're already starting to ship a couple of these and the rest of them are going to be shipped very soon so this is going to hurt their nvidia gpu sales because equihash is an algorithm which is like zcash and zencash and so forth dominated by these nvidia gpus so those sales are going to go down. The used market's going to rise. People are going to buy more from the used market because they're just going to be cheaper, you know, basic su supply and demand stuff there. So that's interesting. Um, I mean, not a lot of people talk about this, but if you look at it, this is my point of view, conspiracy theory, whatever, if you want to call it. But why would they release a new GPU right now, even if they could? Why would they do that with these Equihash miners coming out? It's going to hurt their sales, and they're only going to be able to sell to the gamers and there's just going to be a huge influx of used cards on the market. I mean, it would basically, long story short, it would just be a terrible move to launch a GPU right now, especially on their architecture, which is so geared toward these algorithms. So, you know, and, and AMD, if you're unfamiliar, doesn't have anything coming, um, as far as I know, for the rest of the year besides their 
500X series, which is just another rebrand. So we got 470s, we got 570s, we'll have 570Xs, and they're all gonna be pretty much the same card. So a very recent, interesting development, I have, this, uh, I have all these links again below, is if you look over here, you scroll through this thread, this is uh, really the main takeaway here. Prague POW, and these are apparently the numbers on there. I haven't fact checked this, but this is really easy to show right here for you guys live. You look at these numbers, this pretty, this kind of levels the playing field here, right? But more importantly, this shows that the bigger, more powerful, more, you know, more expensive GPUs are going to be the ones that's, that will be able to withstand the next wave of GPU algorithms. They're going to have to get really centric here. They're, they're, I mean, centric as far as memory hard. What makes these GPU algorithms, you know, able to be ASIC resistance? that's basically the actual memory point which i'll get to more later but i think here we go um let's see blah 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 oh, no, i shouldn't say that uh, anyway it's this is a great article i'm gonna get to it in a second i wanted to pull up the point real quick but there's a whole different pressure when you're live it's fun it's exciting and it's kind of stressful but either way um f hash is the hardest algorithm per this article and you know i, I take this I respect this article. If you followed us, we, we had our we set our piece on the Antminer A3 and Psycho and all that all that whole debacle unfolded. But either way, um, and we'll get back to that in a second. But basically, Ethash is the hardest memory algo, and Equihash is not very ASIC resistant, even though that's how it was painted to me and all the other miners. So Prog POW. It's under development by Oh God, a company, and it's spearheaded by Oh God, a girl. You got to follow that drama, all that stuff, look into that, see what it's all about. Long story short, these are very smart people, and they're the ones who released the F largement pill, and this is their proposal. You know, you need to look at all the underlying things, be skeptical, you know, how will they personally gain from this? I mean, let's, let's not be naive here, but, you know, I don't care if they personally gain if they also save GPU mining. And again, I just want to make a clear statement here. Voscoin is a cryptocurrency channel. We're going to cover everything that is mining. We're not just going to ignore ASIC and FPGA mining because we're GPU miners at heart. So please understand that. We're here to bring you, you know, the best stuff we can on the whole entire sector. That's how you make the best, best decisions there. So we've got this algorithm. And if we click back over here. This is, uh, this is pretty cool to see because we've got the Vegas and the 1080. Like if you look at these numbers, these are pretty good numbers if you look at the price point of these cards it's all relative which would kind of level the the playing field hash rate doesn't matter hash rates all relative so it doesn't matter if this hash rate seems low if the whole relative hash rate is low it's a normal plus you kick off all these asic and fpga miners then your earnings would be through the roof so i'll get i'll touch on more of the long term but you look short term we're fine medium term it's going to get a little bit ugly when all these asics start coming out for eth hash and equa hash Long term, if we go to these algorithms like Prog POW and there's some other proposals sort of similar, it'd be like a, I mean it'd be a, another golden era of mining where you wouldn't be able to get a GPU. But that's if that happens, and that's if these big projects adopt it and so forth. There's a lot of ifs. With as far as ASIC miners, application specific integrated circuit, these miners do just one thing, and it is mine. And when they are no longer relevant, you throw them in the trash. That's it. When when your GPU is no longer relevant, you can play video games. You can you know do whatever you want with it. There's some other guys who lick them. I mean, they think that's funny, but they're just licking a bunch of carcinogens. We'll see how well that goes for them. Either way, <laughs> so we got the E3 coming out soon. We got the Z9 pretty much coming out now. This is going to have a big impact, and it's going to be a big impact soon. Not really much else to it as far as the actual earnings. Um, only ASIC I have right now is the I have my T9 Plus, which I have a cool experiment that I just have not had time to do yet. I got it because it was cheap and actually earned semi decently, as opposed to the D3, which is cheap and does not earn semi decently. Yeah, we have a video on that way back, that whole debacle, they flooded the market. Wow. So we look over here, you can see um, this is my slush pool dashboard. And yesterday I mined 68,000 Satoshis, which is .00068371. I covered that a couple days ago. Satoshi is basically you just look at the Bitcoin. It's got eight decimals. Each number is going to be a Satoshi. So if it was just .00000 whatever, 71, it would be 71 Satoshis and so forth. You just keep going up. What that translates to 
is, well, $5, which actually is pretty good for how cheap that miner is. Again, it might not seem like a lot, and you're like, well, we pay a lot in electric. I mean, let's even say we took two bucks off. I mean, it's still three bucks. I don't know why I changed the number like that, maybe more of a visualization thing. But either way, the, the earnings for what you're spending there is, is very good. At least for now I'm not endorsing it or whatever but that's that's the thing that that is everything that is ASIC mining it's great for a while then it's good and then it's worthless pretty much that's the short version of it we move on to FPGA so this is an interesting one this is called the dwarf dwarf miner dwarf FPGA they're calling it the anti ASIC their their whole guys is they want to bring FPGAs to the masses and it almost looks like a little mini bike miner Bicycle miners are kind of like this weird hybrid of like ASICs and uh, FPGAs, but they're technically they're they're more they're I think they're technically they would be classified as an ASIC, but they're much more akin to an FPGA as opposed to like the Bitmain ant miners. So you can check this stuff out again, all the links below. But this is what their site looks like, and this is what this dude looks like, and this is the guy that I am fake holding in the thumbnail. It's it's interesting. I mean, they just slapped a Monero logo on it. Um, I mean, they have a couple of videos like th this is a real piece like you can see this 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 thing exists It's not made up But what but is this like actually something that actually mines like I'm just saying this physical object is real I'm not and obviously FPGA is real, but I'm talking about dwarf miners specifically not endorsing them and quite honestly I think they're a scam They were allowing some PayPal orders I wouldn't be afraid to order through PayPal But apparently their PayPal got shut down which is possible because PayPal is a giant pain in, in uh just pain for me as well so anyway either way it's interesting because if we run these numbers I kind of skipped over that part I didn't mean to click that so let's see they're doing uh what's the hash rates basically it, it's it's like almost it's like four or five Vegas basically it's like four or five Vegas which turns out to a hash rate of like 7,000 kilohash on uh, kryptonite b7 and we go over here to what to mine. Let's let's click off here just to give you a clear projection. It's just always easy to showcase this stuff on what to mine. It's not the best resource, but it is a good resource. Uh, I mean, we look we look down here. We see this is going to give our hash rate on Kryptonite V7 to be about 7K, which is about in line with this. This is the kind of numbers you're pulling. But <laughs> here's the deal. You're like, oh, that's not crazy. It's like kind of a realistic number. Yeah, it is. Except for the fact that three three fifteen. This could be three fifteen dollars, three fifteen euros, you know, three fifteen euros. It could be three fifteen, you know, great British pounds. Doesn't matter. Either way, any of those, this would be a very fast break even point. Then we've got a DIY FPGA in this thread. This is an interesting one. But, you know, if you don't know how to do this, like, if you need help from these other people, you're always going to get the hand-me-downs. And you can look here, we're looking at these algorithms, and they're going to release things slowly. You're going to just get the crumbs. I'm not a big fan of FPGAs. I was interested in them, but, you know, there's such a giant barrier to entry, whether it's a financial barrier or a knowledge barrier, which I kind of cover um, in, in my article there. You know, what I like about ASICs is at least you can use it. Like, my dad could set up an ASIC. I, I help my dad, and he can operate his GPU mining rig. My dad, with a lot of help, could not operate an FPGA miner. That's no disrespect to my dad. He's a phenomenal man. But my point is just that this is not something that your mother and your father and your cousin who aren't, you know, coders, developers, could use. And even then, they still may not be able to use it. But that's the one that looks like this, and regardless, it's super interesting and super profitable. This rig, you know, let's see the numbers. It basically costs like 20, 30K, and it's making, you know, 200, 300 bucks a day, more or less. I mean, that's that's some serious earnings with, with, a, with a little footprint like this. That's impressive. Finally, to this article. This is the state of cryptocurrency by David Vorick. He is the lead developer of Sia, Sia coin. And they, over the last year, developed their own ASIC miner. And they went through all of this. 
you know, whether or not you like their project, him, or anything, you really need to respect his opinion here. Because he went through the the trials. He navigated the gauntlet of this. And this is a very daunting task. And long story short, basically says that you can create an ASIC for any miner. And as far as rolling them out, it's only going to take several months. You know, take you a year if you're a new guy. Take you a couple, you know, probably three four months if you're bitmain if you're really cracking at it bitmain doesn't use the most efficient method to create their asic miners they use the fastest method that's why you'll notice a lot of their miners have a very high uh power usage you know uh, you know that's just they're, they're making they're getting it out there and they're getting it out there fast they have competitors but they're the big dog they've got the most money they got the most skills and they're very efficient and he, he actually outlines all of this so long story short, <laughs> you know, this is some David versus Goliath stuff. And if these projects don't band together and resist ASIC miners and FPGA miners, they will be dominated. This is a great point. Monero was secretly mined by ASIC miners for all of 2017. And with the boom of cryptocurrency, the, they made a massive killing. It is insane. The numbers are wild. Uh, you know, but it's hard to how it's hard. How do you pick up on that when crypto is booming? You're just like, wow, like everybody's buying a bunch of GPUs, and of course they're mining Monero. It's one of the biggest coins, one of the biggest GPU mineable coins. It wasn't until you know recently that that started to get exposed and seen more. Um, you know, this kind of stuff goes on. There's an article by Zuko that I actually didn't pull up. Let's see if I can find it real quick for you guys. Um, I noticed uh, Fluffy Pony was the one. I think he, he retweeted it here or something like that. Let's, let's scroll down here. And maybe he just... Here we go. Perfect. Found it not too, not too slow here. So long story short, uh, Zuko had a video chat with Jian Wu. And it, you can read this. I'll, I'll throw this in the description uh, links as well. But long story short... As far as I'm concerned, I don't see Zuko forking against ASICs. He I, I, he wasn't interested in it from the beginning, if you followed our previous stuff. If Zcash does not fork against the ASIC miners, then uh, this is going to this is gonna get interesting, and it's going to get interesting fast. Long story short, I mean, I keep saying that. He, he was very receptive to Jian Wu, which is one of the main players, one of two basically very main players at Bitmain. And he's really like the icon, the face of it, if you would. Most people would consider him the main guy at Bitmain. Uh, either way, um, you guys can read through this. It's not looking too good for uh, Equihash, uh, Equihash in the short term. Or I should really say in the medium term is really what I was the verbiage I was using earlier. I think this is this, there's gonna a lot of a lot of ways this could unfold, and it's up to the community to speak out and create legitimate reasons of why there should be ASIC resistance. Because if the ASIC is resistant reason is just because well, I have a GPU farm, it's invalid. You have to actually find like true, true like meaning to why should we resist the ASIC miners? Like the fact that you know. My brother, who just has a basic gaming computer, can turn on his computer and mine some Bitcoin and get involved in cryptocurrency. He's not big into it, but he, he thinks it's cool. You know, he likes to make money. And the fact that he can make money with something he already has and support a system. And more importantly, it's just that decentralization aspect. We, we got my brother, you know, in his basement verifying transactions just because, you know, he wants to. You know, it's not just one central farm doing that. So, you know, that, that kind of list goes on and on. But, again, you know, you really need to fight, fight these things with reason. Otherwise, <laughs> GPU mining will fall. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I personally think there's a very bright future. But that's only with focus and innovation. Uh, at, at this current rate, it's kind of looking like well, the GPU miners, myself included, we're, we're going to bleed out. I don't want to bleed out. But what I do want you to do is head over to the Voscoin YouTube channel and smash that subscribe button. You can't see it because this is my view. And leave a thumbs up on this video because this concludes the presentation part of this live stream. I'm going to open up some Q&A and so forth. But again, always make sure to subscribe to us. I'm looking to be the leading cryptocurrency YouTube channel. And this is why you always need to tune in for our live streams because if you're watching this after fact, 
You're about to miss the fun part where, you know, 